What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech, and I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot and hopefully fix this LG LN5400 LED TV. LG TVs, a common repair is um, defective backlight. Uh, so you will get audio and no picture. The screen will be completely black. There'll be no glow from the backlight. So keep that in mind. So if you have a glow from your backlight, then, and you have no picture, that can be a bad TCOM board. When the TV's off, you have the red standby light on the bottom right here. And then when you press the power button, this red standby light will go away, right? And then you'll get a flash on the screen. The backlight will go on for a second and then turn off. Let me turn off the lights so you guys can see that happening. Once again, I'm gonna turn off the TV, hit power, there's the red standby light letting you know the TV's off, but it has standby voltage to the main board. Press the power button again. All right, that goes away. You see the flash on the screen, and then the backlight turns off immediately. You got no picture on the screen. Sometimes you can get a light, LED light or a flashlight, and hit the settings button, hit settings and then look for the settings on the screen. That lets you know that TCOM board is working. But I think I have too much light, it's too much glare in this room to even see that. There it is, see? I don't know if you can see that. It says no signal. So the TCOM board is working because right there it said no signal. Checking the voltage to the main board looks good. Checking the voltage to the back light circuit, which is the LED strips. Uh, the voltage isn't exactly correct. You can see the chart next to the plug. That's, that lets you know the proper voltage going to the backlight circuit. But there, the voltage is there, but the backlight circuit is shutting down instantly. So knowing that I fixed this TV in the past and ran through this problem before, I know to replace the LED strips. We're actually we're replacing the LEDs on the LED strips to save some money. And you can have leftover parts to fix other uh, TVs that have a similar issue. Now you're going to get a micro Phillips screwdriver and remove all the micro screws on the outer edge and we're going to pop those clips and you're gonna remove the bezel and that's going to be able to remove these brackets. They're labeled. Well, one will say side, another one will say down and up. And then we're going to go ahead and take off the LCD panel. These are the buffer boards are hardwired to the LCD panel. Do not tear the ribbon cable connections. They're really sensitive. So we're gonna use a suction cup to lift that up. And under that is uh, layers of films. And we're gonna pop the clips to get access to these films. And then we're gonna be able to get access to the LED strips from that point. And we're going to use a backlight LED tester to test the backlights. Uh, I'll leave a link in the video description below where to get the backlight LED uh, strip tester. So right here, we, it looks like we have two bad LEDs. And those two bad LEDs is enough to shut down the whole entire backlight circuit. It's a safety precaution that the uh, circuit uh, shuts down the whole entire circuit if something fails just prevents uh, further damage to the TV so this is the repair kit and consists of LEDs and diffuser lens and I'm gonna use a credit card or actually an old license and you're gonna pry it under and just slide it down using a hot hair dryer actually loosens the adhesive on the LED strips which I should have done I should take all my own advice actually now these, there's two parts of these LED strips. There's left and right. And they're labeled L and R. So right there, I mark, marked the X on the bed LED. So make sure you mark it. And then I have tweezers. I'm gonna heat it up on a heat pad and remove the diffuser lens. And then heat it up again and let that solder liquefy. Get tweezers, don't pry it off. If you rip off the solder pads or solder pads, then you have to replace the, LED, the whole entire LED strip. So just uh, wait until it liquefies and it, you'll feel it uh, loosen up and then you can remove it softly or gently. Just you, sometimes it takes a minute or two. And then this one is actually cracked. 
So this one's going to come out in two pieces. And almost there. You, there you go. So you slide it off just like that. Now using a multimeter, you could put your meter in uh, diode mode, which is uh, this mode right here. You see that little arrow. It's diode mode. And then with the positive and negative probes, you test each side of that diode, which is the LED, light emitting diode. And uh, touch the cathode and anode. And it should turn on the LED. Now this says OL on the screen. And then if you reverse the leads, and then it'll say 0.7 usually. It shouldn't you shouldn't hear that that's a short signal so if you if you touch it like that and you hear that noise that means the um, LED is shorted it's bad or if you read one way and it reads OL one way and you reverse the leads and it reads OL the other way then that's open so that's also bad so let me turn off the light so you guys take a look what it's doing see so that's how you test it And there's a, a fat solder pad and a skinny solder pad. So now I'm prepping the solder pads with fresh solder. Just need a layer. And then make sure you put the LED in the right spot. One side and the back of the LED will be a, a wide solder pad and then a skinny solder pad connection, which is the positive and negative on the diode. It's LED is a diode basically, a light emitting diode. And then set it in and it'll settle right in. And now we're going to test it. It just plugs right in, and the adhesive should stick right on. I usually um, don't replace the adhesive. I never had any issues with that. And then you're going to test it with the LED tester. Put a load on it for maybe three or four seconds. Right there. Looks good. And then we're going to use three dots of super glue to put the diffuser lens on. And then... Go ahead and hold that in place for a good 30 seconds. And next, we're going to work on the next one. And with this one, we just let it heat up for a couple minutes or maybe a minute or so. And use the needle nose tweezers. Remove it. And then we're going to prep the pads. Once again, there's a fat pad and a skinny pad. If you bridge the connections, by the way, you'll probably damage the LED. So it, at that point, you would have to remove it and put a new LED. Now just let it settle in, in place. And we're going to test it. Make sure uh, I didn't bridge that connection. Because I think I put too much solder on that. Nope, it, it is good. And then we're going to put the, um, the push pins back on. And I actually broke one. I had to use uh, super glue to fix it. It may happen to you. Just uh, get a heads up. Just get some super glue on hand when you do this project. And then we're going to wipe everything down. Make sure it's dust free. I used uh, painter's tape to remove any uh, excess dust that the microfiber cloth missed. And then it takes really two people to put this down, the LCD panel down. Oh, don't use, <laughs> don't put too much faith in these suction cups. Yeah, I pretty much was confident that I permanently damaged the LCD screen at this point. And I was, right now, I was cursing myself off. Oh man, I felt so horrible when that happened. I was pretty much confident that I permanently damaged the LCD screen. So now at this point, I'm just putting it all back together, putting the brackets on and expecting the worst. Uh, yeah, so two people, I recommend two people doing this project or at least not putting too much faith in that suction cup. And then we're going to put the TV boards back on. And you want to always double check your work. 
sometimes I forget uh, plugging something in. Turn on a TV, I'm like, oh, it's not working. And then just uh, realize that I forgot to plug a small cable in. All right, I'm gonna plug it in and hopefully it would turn on. I don't know, we'll see. Plug it in. Press the power button. Oh wait, we got black. The backlight is on. No picture though. Oh it. Oh cool. We got a picture. So if the, so, that's how you fix this LG 42LN5400 model. Uh, this may apply for other TV models as well. I'll leave a link in the video description below where to get the um, TV repair kit. Um, also in the video description will be the other TV models that this fix will. Um, apply. If you want more how-to videos coming your way, click on the subscribe link right here or down below and select the bell to be notified for my latest videos. If you know anyone that this video will help, go ahead and click on the share button below and share this video to them, help someone out. If you want to check out my other TV repair videos, click on this playlist right here and give me a big thumbs up if this video was informative. Thanks guys for watching.